I hate computers. Yes, they can provide hours of fun, but they also tend to involve themselves in tasks which should not require one, such as copying your old videotapes to DVDs. That task should be as simple as connecting your VCR or camcorder directly to a DVD burner and is with the Sony DV Direct. I know some people will be quick to tell me that DVDs are obsolete because Netflix and Best Buy both gave up on it in 2023. But DVDs and Blu-rays are actually still the third best-selling item category on eBay. So I think it's a format that still has a lot of life left. Sony had numerous models of portable DVD recorders from 2004 to 2011. This one is the VRD-MC5 from 2007. On the front it has your tray loading optical drive. On this side it has a USB port, left and right audio inputs, composite video input, S video input, DV input. On the other side it has card slots for memory stick and memory stick pro and SD and XD and compact flash. These card slots were designed for copying photos from your camera to create a slideshow DVD and you can also load mp3 files to use as background music but unfortunately it cannot record video to a memory card. You'll need to use a DVD. In 2008 Sony replaced it with the VRD MC6 which has some minor and mostly unimportant new features. However, that updated model lacks the compact flash card slot and the S-Video input, which is why I specifically chose this older model. I got it for $26.40 plus shipping on eBay. That's a bargain compared to its original price of over $200 and to the cost of professional digitizing services, which can easily cost as much as I paid for this per tape. On the top is a small color LCD monitor, some controls, and a big red recording button. And it tells us we can transfer home movies and digital photos to DVD quickly and easily without a PC. And it supports all types of recordable and rewritable DVD plus R and DVD dash R discs, except for DVD dash R dual layer. Although it does support DVD plus R dual layer. For now I'll use a Fujifilm DVD Plus R because that's what I happen to have on hand. So I'll open the disc tray and put it in. And it's asking us to insert memory card or set up and connect camcorder. While these analog and DV inputs are the main attraction of this device, you can also connect it to a handy cam through USB. And they do mean a Sony Handycam, because Sony being Sony, they can't resist the urge to lock you into their own products. But if you do happen to have a Sony Handycam from around the mid-2000s to early 2010s, you can just plug it into USB here, and then touch the disc burn button here, and then it immediately starts formatting the disc. And now it's copying all the videos from the Handycam to the DVD without even needing to touch any of the buttons on this device. And it's doing a lossless copy so it's not re-encoding the videos. It's a perfect copy of what the Handycam recorded onto your DVD. So it only takes a couple minutes usually. And it's already done. You can also pick and choose which videos to copy to DVD based on either their thumbnails or the dates you recorded them. You can even do incremental backups of your videos from the camcorder to DVDs. For example, I use the DV Direct to copy video from this Handycam, which I used to record one of my recent videos, to a disc, and it automatically created a menu and separated each recording date into its own title and each clip you recorded has its own chapter marker allowing you to easily skip between them 
And if you have a DVD handy cam, you can also consolidate the contents of several of these mini DVDs onto one full size DVD. So it's really quite sophisticated in performing all these functions that almost nobody has a reason to do anymore. Now for something that you might actually want to do today, and that is transfer your mini DV tapes, or what people refer to as digitizing them, even though mini DV is already digital. So all you'll need is a working mini DV camcorder. It does not need to be a Sony. DV was an industry standard, so it works just fine with other brands, such as this Panasonic and a 4-pin to 4-pin firewire cable. Now you just take your tape and put it into the camcorder. And turn it on in playback mode. And on the DV Direct you select Video to DVD and you choose DV In and you can either use it to manually copy the video as you're playing the tape or you can copy the entire tape in one shot and when you do that it will automatically rewind the tape to the beginning and once that's done it will automatically start playing and copying it to the DVD Carlos. <laughs> 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 and if there are any blank sections of tape, it will automatically pause the recording until the video starts playing again. That way you won't end up with blank sections on the DVD. And if it either reaches the end of the tape or finds a blank section of tape longer than two minutes, it will automatically stop the recording, finalize the disc, and eject it. There are just detected two minutes of blank tape after the end of the recording. It's asking us if we want to finalize the disc. I'll say yes. It says after finalizing, no further recording allowed because this is a non rewritable disc. And now it's finalizing. And there out pops our perfect DVD copy of this mini DV tape. Couldn't be any easier. Amarillo. Dale. Plateado. Dale. Y blanco. No, y... Blanco. Dale. Blanco y todos los colores en el Deportivo Z350. Órale. O me quedo. Dale. Blanco y todos los colores en el Deportivo Z350. Exterras para aventureros y aventureras como tú. And one nice touch is that it does support mini DV tapes that were recorded in widescreen. And it will correctly keep that aspect ratio on the DVD. But it goes by whatever the aspect ratio was when you began transferring the video from the tape to the disc. So if you have a tape that has a mix of 4x3 and 16x9 recordings on it, you'll have to copy those across manually in order to have the correct aspect ratios. Say hi, Bo. Hi. Did you do the house yet, Rachel? No, I didn't do the outside yet. Remind me when we leave. It also supports Digital Eight, which was Sony's method of recording digital video onto the same type of cassettes that Video 8 and Hi8 camcorders used. The signal coming out of the camcorder is identical to a Mini DV camcorder. So everything I just said about Mini DV also applies to Digital 8. What did Millie do last night? She woke me up. And because she was biting my, my arm and scratching it at the same time. Do Millie and Missy get along? Millie was hissing at Missy. What was Missy doing? Going crazy. Barking at her? No, she was just really hyper. Missy tried to get in the hot tub last night. Really? Yes, Samantha was trying to drag her in. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not support high-definition HDV camcorders. If you try it, 
you get an error message saying the input signal is not DV format, cannot record. It will only work if you use the camcorder's option to down convert HDV to regular DV. Then you can use it to copy your HDV tapes to DVD, but only at standard definition quality. So they had a, 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 a young kid who was asthmatic and he kept coming into the ED. So what do they do? They put him on the, you know, the nebulizer, they give him something, you puff, you know, you know, do this, maybe you put him in overnight so he doesn't do it. The kid lived in an area that was not too far away from the highway and uh, they didn't have air conditioning and uh, it was a hot August day. The doctor said what he needs to be is in air conditioning. The ins because they were the insurer, they bought the kid an air conditioner. Guess what? doesn't come to the emergency room anymore. Now you can't do that, Aetna, you know, look at your benefit policy. <laughs> I guarantee you it doesn't say, doesn't say, you know. When copying video from DV tapes, you get one title per tape on the disc. It does not automatically split them up according to the dates that the video clips were originally recorded. But it can optionally create automatic chapter markers at 5, 10, or 15 minute increments, which does make it easier to find approximately the part of the tape that you want to watch after it's been copied to DVD. These inputs on the side are where the real fun begins, because you can use them to record from any analog video source using either composite or S-video. For example, a camcorder playing a Hi8 tape through S-video. Good job, I'll take that Mine's bigger than yours. But that's quite all right. <laughs> First dive briefing. Oh my. I don't have a, I don't even, what day is it? I don't know, I don't know what day is it, but I don't know what day is it. No idea at all. Or another camcorder playing a video 8 tape through composite. Here's Jeremy. Enough, thank you, Vinny. <laughs> and he's have a crumbed top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you should be getting one of them at your house. Absolutely. A little Thank you, mate. Yeah. Good idea. Well, here we are. We're in London. Hello, London. Hello, London. Where's London, guys? England. You have to say it. London, England. London, England. England. Paris, France, not Paris, Texas. It's worth noting, though, that while the DV Direct has a little built-in monitor so you can see what you're recording, it does not have a built-in speaker. So when capturing from a VCR, it's a good idea to connect a small TV to the VCR's RF output so you can monitor the audio of what you're recording. You can even get to place a brush on canvas. It's free and expressive. It's a super way of fulfilling your dreams of creating beautiful paintings. Most important, it happens very quickly. But that doesn't mean that practice and determination aren't important. It means that you will see immediate results and that that will encourage you to continue on. But remember, an artist is seldom completely satisfied with his or her paintings. There's always the feeling that you can improve. You will always know in your heart that your next painting will be that long-awaited masterpiece. Here's a sample of a home video from 1992 recorded at SP speed with regular monaural audio. I match up the coupons. But you know what I'm saying for the week long? When you send the coupons out, right? Whatever shop right has got all there, I hook up that with the coupons like you give us or like look at the paper. All together, I get a and here's a sample of an EP recording with hi-fi stereo audio recorded from analog cable TV. It's not as if we lied to them or didn't want to do it. And so, wanted to do it. But it was late. I, for one, had far too many rage teams. I could barely keep my eyes open. Next thing you know, we were asleep. Well, at least we were in the same bed together. No, which means, technically, we did sleep together. Technically. 
Here's a rather poor quality EP mode recording, which gave me some visible glitching when I tried capturing it using a Cloner Box Pro due to its unstable video signal. The flight attendants are specially trained people who look out for the passengers' safety and gracefully serve meals and drinks on board. All this while keeping their balance. Uh, gate 9. By the jet age, planes were being used for just about everything. When you try copying a commercially pre-recorded tape made with macrovision encoding, at first it looks just fine on the little built-in monitor, but when you try recording it, it says copy protection signal detected, cannot record. But that's not such a big deal because normally only major motion pictures were macrovision encoded and virtually all of those have already been released on DVD with much better quality than what you could get by copying a VHS tape and then re-released on DVD just in case you missed it the first time. Vintage computers and video game consoles can often be difficult to get a good video capture from because the signal they put out doesn't quite conform to broadcast standards. So let me try a few games on my Tandy 1000 and Sega Genesis and see how they turn out. At its lowest quality setting, the DV Direct can give you up to 6 hours of recording time on a single layer disc or 12 hours on a double layer disc. But the LP and especially SLP modes cause a very noticeable loss of quality, so I would recommend not going any lower than SP mode, which looks fine and gives you 2 hours of recording time per disc. And if you need to record anything longer than that, just split it up onto multiple discs because these things are so cheap these days. Este carro es un 2003 Ford Mustang. Mustang? Mustang. And it has no problem capturing PAL video sources if you just go into the setup menu and change the color system from NTSC to PAL. Now we're getting a full color image from my PAL video camera. Now that you've got all this great video recorded, you can, of course, play the disc in any regular DVD or Blu-ray player, as I already showed. But what about getting it into your computer? If you have a real computer, that's as simple as just popping it into the built-in optical drive. But if you have a weenie modern computer that doesn't have one, then an inexpensive external USB DVD drive will work just fine. If you're running Windows 10 or newer, you'll also need to get the MPEG-2 video extension, which is a free download from the Microsoft Store. Then you'll need another free program called DVD VOB to MPG, which will let you easily rip the contents of the disk to video files on your hard drive. Once you install and run that, you just click on this button, and then you find your DVD drive which in this case is D. 
you open that up and look in the video TS folder, then you'll see a bunch of VOB files with numbers in them. You can select all the ones that have numbers. You just click on the first one and then hold down shift and click on the last one and open that. Then you tell the program where you want to put the files. I'll put them in my video folder and then you just click on convert to MPG and let it run. And now you have a bunch of MPEG files which you can play in any media player program. And edit in any halfway decent video editor, even including Microsoft's Windows Movie Maker. Now if only Sony made a device which can capture analog video with the same great quality as the DV Direct, but which records directly to a USB hard drive to make it much easier to get the video files onto your computer. Oh wait, they did. Well, I guess that'll be the topic for a future video. Oh, man. I think I ate a fucking rock. Yeah, alright. I'm bleeding. Let me see. <laughs> 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 oh.